In today's spookerific review, we're going to be having a look at debris. Okay, maybe it's not debris, but we are going to be having a look at the McFarlane Toys, McFarlane Monster Series 3, The Six Faces of Madness. This is the Collector's Club Accessory Pack. The third series of McFarlane's Monsters action figure line focuses on the past, a historical look back at some of human race's most notorious blood letters and miscreants. Incredibly detailed and fully accessorized, Monsters Series 3 gives a new meaning to the term monster. You guys had asked if I was going to have a look at the accessory pack for the Six Faces of Madness, and of course I had to deliver that. A little bit later, into the month of Mortober, a little on that later, just before we have a look at the accessories, one thing I wanted to show you, and I don't think I showed you for the Six Faces of Madness individual figures, is that they give you this neat looking timeline where it categorizes each of the characters' birth and death. Attila the Hun, born 406, died 453. Vlad the Impaler, 1431 to 1476. Elizabeth Bathory, 1560 to 1614. Billy the Kid, 1859 to 1881. Jack the Ripper, 1888. You'll notice there's still no death there. And Rasputin, 1869 to 1916. We first spoke of Attila the Hun, and actually he's one of the few characters that doesn't come with any accessories from the accessory pack. He sort of gets omitted from the lineup here. So we'll move him aside and we'll have a look at the rest of the accessories that come included here. We'll first look at these little tiny canisters. Now these are intended for Rasputin. They're of different vials and different concoctions in which he would have for his spells. This one's really neat because it's a smaller little almost mutant cyclops that's inside these vials. This one can't be opened, however, but this one here, you can see that's been painted on the interior of it. It clearly looks as if it's been emptied, and yet the remains still are there. Um, he also comes with uh, like a little measuring cup, if you will. Looks like it's got some slime or something on the interior of that. And then he's also got uh, a bunch of test tubes, a red one and red one and a green one there. All right, so let's bring in, we'll bring in Rasputin. Now, unfortunately, I got some sad news, guys. I got some sad news. The top here, let me just bring the camera up. This top here broke, so I'm gonna have to take some glue and glue it into place. You can see how the whole back corner has broken right off. So I'm gonna have to find the other piece of plastic that broke off in the process. Because of that, it's not gonna unfortunately be suspending Mr. Rasputin from the rope as it was when I initially did the review of it. It's one of the problems when it always comes to be with the McFarlane lineups is that they're very fragile at times. I mean, I figured if anything of all the characters that I looked at from the Six Faces of Madness that Rasputin was probably gonna be the one that was gonna give you the most problems because he's got the hooks to suspend him, he's got the very thin cording threading, and he also had the hook. Of all the things, it wasn't any of that. It didn't end up being this piece right here that broke off. So it's not gonna support him. As soon as I put him on it, it's gonna pop this right off. So I'm just gonna to have to unfortunately leave it for the time being. But we'll look at the the contraption that he comes included with. Okay, so he had these little test tubes. Remember those? Yeah, okay. You can take the test tubes and you can slide them down. They only give you two, unfortunately, because there's a lot more space to fit more than just two. In fact, you have another two on the top and several down below. But he did also come with a couple, I think, as well. And we can take this and 
Again, there's really no rhyme or reason. In fact, actually, this section right here looks like it's the an outline of where that should go. But you're really just going to lay them everywhere. No rhyme, really no reason. You could put the measuring cup up there if you want. And this, this accessories, these accessories only are just filling out this. Doesn't really add on to anything. It's certainly not like the Elizabeth Bathory set that we're going to be looking at. Those accessories, now that plays some enhancement to the figure. This one is really only just adding some extra stuff to the existing stuff that's, that Rasputin already had. Now remember this guy? This is Billy the Kid. He came with... Well, he came with a fair number of weapons. Most of them you can take out. They were already kind of glued or molded in place, but he had several different holsters. I don't even know if I remember mentioning this in the review, but he also came with a knife. I may have mentioned it. The knife fits just in the side holster here. It's it's a more of a finicky, harder thing to reach, but he does have the little holster on the side. That's just the reason probably why I left it off completely. Um, he came with a rifle. And uh, then I noticed as well, he had this holster here, completely omitted of firearms. Well, if you had picked up the club exclusive, he does come with a rifle. Really nice looking rifle, I have to admit as well. Even put little rivets, almost like little brass rivets there on the end of the handle. You can even see there's a little bit of scrolling on the top there as well. A really neat looking rifle. He comes with that. He also comes with something that almost looks like a musket or a dual barrel and looks more like a, a dual barrel musket. It's got some nice gold trimming around there. The handle as well as the under area of the, the gun is a, like a lighter brown and you've painted the top there. I like these for some reason. I don't know why I enjoy these so much. He's got a little I guess it would be sights that you'd be looking through. And he does come also with that as well. And he comes with a, not one, but two different pistols. Perhaps peacekeepers, the type of gun that is. Or revolvers, just straight revolvers. Very different from one another. This one's a little bit bigger on the top and has a white handle. The other one is a smaller handle with a little bit of gold trim there. So you can then take that. Remember that holster? Yeah, you can put one of the pistols in there if you want. And, well, there's another holster on the side. We could put maybe that in the back. It's a little bit smaller. This has an opening, really, so you could take the already included gun that he came with. And that could, again, feed through the, for the top. It's going to stick out a little bit. And, uh, you know, then you could put a couple of pistols in his hands. He really is excessively armored up. But I guess that's what McFarland decided that he was going to come included with. Neat again that he's coming with all these extra accessories. I feel at the very least he should have come with the rifle or the little small side pistol. He should have came with that right out of the packaging. Looking at that and seeing that this is empty when you get the figure out... You, you just know to yourself, and a couple of viewers had commented on it as well, oh, to get this, you'd have to get the accessory set, the club exclusive. I cry foul a little bit, because I think if, if you're going to sculpt it in there, he really should have come included with it. Then we get to the things that I personally think are a little bit more exciting. Uh, we come with three different components, or three different figures accessories. We'll start with these ones. This one here is for Jack the Ripper. One of my favorite figures from this from this wave. Oh, we can't also forget his hat. Now, the only thing I left off from him here, looking at him, is that his dripping bag, his little medical bag. Just a real pain in the butt to get into his hand, so I've just left it off here for the time being. Now, Jack the Ripper does come with a lamppost. The lamppost consists of two parts. You just take the top part and attach it to the bottom part, and you get yourself like a little lamppost. The lamppost does have a peg hole on the underside right there. But if you like look at the display base, put that there for a second. If you look at the display base, I don't see a peg. At least not that I'm aware of, I see a peg. So I guess you could either have it like right there. Let me just put them down here so you can see it. You can have the lamppost right there, for example, or you can have it at the back. 
because you could angle it a little bit. Maybe it will fit around. I guess it fits around the corner area of the wall and you can have it like that. Now I did think that the lamp post was longer than it needed to be. Should have been a little bit shorter, but really then when you put it against the wall, it doesn't stick that much further up from the wall that comes with uh, Jack the Ripper. And we just quickly look at that. It's got some nice pebble stones for the bottom, up at the top and illuminated or slightly misleading, but it gives you the look at least that it's an illuminated lamp because they've given it a like, slight off tint of like the gold in there. It's almost like an auburn color that they put in there. A little on the fragile side, but it definitely adds something to Jack the Ripper's display. Then he comes also included with this. Well, Jack doesn't, but the club exclusive does. And this is Jack the Ripper's alternate head. I'm gonna go ahead and pop him off. And we'll just move the display diorama back there for a second. Jack the Ripper's head, of course, looked like this. Remember that? Didn't review it that long ago. He also comes with this variation of head. The giveaway, the dead giveaway, is the fact that the peg for the neck is bent and awkward as, as it is. It only makes then sense that it attaches to this head. Now, I don't find it's all that easy to remove his head. I've tried this a couple of times now. The, the peg is so big, shy of just heating it and popping it right off is about the only way that I could see that I'm going to get this right off. There's what the alternate head sculpt looks like. He kind of looks more like he's, I don't know, meant, he looks like he's slightly mutated or deformed. Another giveaway that this is Jack the Ripper's is you can still see his sideburns as well as the same similar hairstyle at the back. I wish that the peg wasn't as broad as it is because I feel like I'm going to break something trying to remove it and trying to replace it with this one here. In all honesty, though, I don't really like this head sculpt anyways. I would go with more what I consider a more traditional looking head sculpt. But that's something else that is included with this. So price of admission, I'm going to go ahead and put Ripper back onto a stand. I think price of admission for at very least Jack the Ripper is more the lamp post and not necessarily the head sculpt. I don't like the head sculpt myself. It looks a little too departed from what I would consider Jack the Ripper, so I probably would never display him with it. And again, we move on to what I consider kind of the crown jewels, the reasonings for getting the set. Though, again, I like the lamp post as it is. I think that's kind of neat. Uh, we've got, let me just reach off here, and we'll grab Vlad the Impaler. Now, Vlad the Impaler has a couple of things going for him. Now, he had this spear, which, if you remember of my review... You don't remember it. Did you not watch the review? But one thing that unfortunately happened with my staff, my this spear that he wields, is it broke in half. Well, not quite half. It broke about two-thirds of the way. And it, it was a clean break. You can see how clean of a break it was. But it was supposed to be something that was wielded in his hand. But then when I did look at the figure, I also noticed there was this hole right here. Hmm, what was that hole for? Well, you, in theory, could have taken this and stuck it in the side, now leaving Vlad the Impaler with open hands. It doesn't make any sense that he's just kind of wielding back nothing, so he does also come with a sword. But the sword, unfortunately, doesn't fit. It would involve this part being separate, and I'm really actually surprised that they didn't have the handle portion uh, as something that you could have, the hilt is something you could have detached, slid through his hand, I guess it would probably be this way, and then reattach this, or just take it off completely and slide it through. It's sort of the one thing that stumbles and prevents you from being able to, for him to hold the sword. So the sword of sword always relegated to the sheath there on the side. So again, we go back to, he's got a hole there in the base, and then he's also got something that he could potentially hold. Cue the other accessory that comes in this club exclusive. And that is a, if you're asking me, a much broader looking handle. The hole is, or the peg on the bottom is a little bit bigger. Now this isn't something that you could try to fit this into Vlad's hands, but I think it's better suited to just display it on the side. 
He will then have the one that I've broke, unfortunately, broke, and it would be wielded like this, and then you would have the secondary one right here. The intent of why they had that hole. I'm going to have to glue this, and I probably will just go around to fitting this into his hands, and then gluing it in place, calling it a day, and never speaking of it again. And that's Vlad's accessories. See if I can actually make it, uh, it looks somewhat passable. Going to probably have to get some glue happening there, nonetheless. Other inclusions for Vlad is this one soldier that you can see has been, well, he's been severed. His lower half is gone. And I guess the crows there are there to finish the job. It does almost look like he is still alive. I don't know speculation of course but it does seem like he could still be alive as he looks like he's apparently screaming and then you've got these little crows ready to feast on his face that's pleasant his arms have been severed off his torso clean not quite cleanly cut but slightly more butchered if anything else and uh he doesn't have any sort of posability or anything like that the crows are just like standalone side pieces they don't have any posability either and i I don't really know quite where this guy goes. I guess he can sort of just stand behind Vlad. He's sort of just a, quote, filler piece, filling out the diorama, if you will. But he doesn't actually connect anywhere, sort of like the lamppost. It doesn't quite connect anywhere. It sort of just sits on top of the display base. He has the fun task of just kind of looking up at Vlad as Vlad, I guess, is d dispensing justice, probably one of these little hands that are sticking out from the opening here. So there's Vlad's accessories. You'll probably admit, though, that these are much cooler, in my own honest opinion, hopefully yours, than the Billy the Kid and the Rasputin, which I think are a little on the more lame side. Then we get the, I think, the personally the star of this show, this large flooring that has several different severed heads. Now, when I did the review of Elizabeth Bathory, I had mentioned, let's bring her in right now. There she is in her bathtub looking beautifully morbid with knife and goblet in hand. But I mentioned that she did have peg holes on the undersides of the bathtub legs. Questioning, of course, why he, it would have plugged in in the first place, to which, of course, the answer to that would have been this extra display stand. So we can go ahead and attach that. And again, you're just gonna, let's just leave the knife off and take the goblet out of her hand for the time being, because I know tipping it upside down is probably gonna cause one of those two to fall out. I'm gonna take the legs and you, of course, have to line up the holes. There's one, there's two, there's three. And let's see if I can get this going here. Do I have it the right way? I feel like I have it the right way. Maybe I don't have it the right way. Maybe it goes this way. When you don't succeed first, certainly try, try again. Don't ever give up. There we go. And you'll see as well, I don't know if you noticed, but there was an outlining of the feet. And those plug just into place like that. And now you can do the blizzard test. Doesn't seem like Elizabeth's going anywhere. We can then revisit the knife. Slide that into her hand. And we can also revisit the goblet. And I think it's safe to say that those aren't going to be going anywhere because I'm probably not going to be tipping it upside down. Okay, and then along with that uh, is this little pitcher. And usually they would use that to fill up the, the bathtub. In this case, you can see that there's a little trickling of blood remaining inside the little pitcher. And it also has the same similar markings to that of the... Uh, the bathtub right down to the fact it's got the little dragon here which are similar to the dragons featured on the side there you see a little dragon handle very nice um, it doesn't now there's a peg hole here and I don't know why specifically it has the peg hole I thought at one point maybe it connected to the lamp post and of course lamp make much sense I don't think she's gonna have a lamp post outside. So then again, she has all these extra pegs. Well, what are these pegs for? Cue this. This is the severed heads. Put that right back there. These are the severed head candelabra that came also included with her. And that will just, let me just lift it up again. 
There's the peg hole, there's the peg, and we'll just attach that to place like that, giving us a completed look. I still question why there's these few little pegs sticking up, like there's one here and there's one here, but I think closer inspection, it's not actually peg holes, remove the hair, it's not actually peg holes, it's splattering of blood as it hits the floor and splashes up. You'll see actually in the one over here, and then we spin it around, and then she's got a secondary one here. That's the only thought that I might think that these could be little splash ups of blood. The little pitcher doesn't really attach to anything, so I guess you can kind of just have it to the side. And there you have the completed Elizabeth Bathory, complete with now the three heads that were on the candelabra before, and now three additional heads, one right there. Let me just take that off for a second, tilt this up. There's one head right there, and then there's two other heads right there. I love that they've soaked the hair of the, the severed heads that are sitting on. You can imagine how much blood has made its way across the flooring here, and it really does add a little extra oomph if you ask me. I'm all about adding extra oomph to figures. Personally speaking, I think the club accessory set cater more to these three figures. The Billy the Kid, I don't even think, I don't even really consider those weapons necessary. I really think he should have had just one pistol included with him the first go around. And Rasputin's little extra vials and extra things that come included with him, I don't think are worth the price of admission. These, however, accent and enhance the overall display. Jax is nice because it gives you the extra lamp post. Rasputin's is good because it gives you the severed torso and the additional stake. But I think the real reason to pick up this set is if you've already picked up the Elizabeth Bathory and you, of course, wanted to have something to display the bathtub on. Adding only more gruesomeness to already gruesome looking characters. For final looks, we're having a look at Elizabeth Bathory because I think she's the figure that benefits the most from having this accessory pack. Vlad the Impaler and Jack the Ripper also benefit by adopting brand new add-ons that I think enhance the overall experience of those figures. But I think the weapons for Billy the Kid and the little vials and test tubes for Rasputin are personal throwaways. Billy the Kid at the very least should have come included with that pistol to start off with, so all these extra weapons most of which can't even be held all in his hand. I mean, he's got more weapons than he has hands. I don't really think he needs to have all those extra accessories, but Elizabeth here benefits the most. That flooring, I didn't realize I needed that fig flooring as much as I did for the figure, and yet now that I'm looking at it, I can't even imagine displaying the figure without it. The bloody floor as well as the severed heads definitely enhance the overall experience, and I like the fact that there's also even a peg to hang or hold the candle opera that sports also the three additional heads. Normally, McFarlane Toys, when it comes to club exclusives, will either give you a repaint of a retail release figure that you may already have in your collection, or exclusive figures for completing a set that you may have already picked up the figures for. At the time that those sets were available, of course, prices would skyrocket, and often at times, the club exclusives could set you back $100 or more. Luckily, with the depreciating value of these over the years and the fact that people just aren't picking them up as they would, the accessory pack here for the Six Faces of Madness set me back only about $20. Uh, $20 that I really didn't think I necessarily need to spend because I was completely content with having the six figures that I already had. I didn't really think I needed an exclusive pack for it. Sure enough, I did. And the takeaway from all of this is I'm really glad that I did get the accessory pack because it does enhance Elizabeth Bathory in a much more gruesome way than I thought it was even possible. Today's spookerific review, my friends, we were having a look at the McFarlane Toys. This was the Six Faces of Madness Club Exclusive Accessory Pack. No, you don't have to be part of a club anymore to get it. You should be able to easily find it now on eBay. Even though this is technically no longer October and we're now into November, I'm uh, still going to want to continue having a look at some of these spooky spots because there were th things that I wanted to have a look at that I just couldn't get around to doing in October. So for that reason, I'm willing to coin November as more Tober. More October. You can never have enough October, if that's my honest opinion. So we're going to have a look at some more spooky spots over the month of November slash Mortober. So if you guys are interested in that kind of stuff, make sure you've 
subscribe to this channel and check out this channel on a regular basis. If you haven't already subscribed to this channel, what are you waiting for? There's a ton of new videos coming your way, both in the spooky sense and regular videos as well. So if you're not into the spooky genre of horror, there's other superhero and other miscellaneous reviews that are gonna be coming to this channel as well. So as, uh, as always, guys, thanks for watching as you always do, and I'll see you next time.